So our first question is, the coroner is a constitutional officer. What do you feel is the responsibility of the Anderson County Coroner? Now, how do you want to start? Do we do the introduction first, or do we just answer the question? We're not doing the introduction. Okay, we're do okay. So it's my opinion, and, and also with the law, that the constitutional mm -hmm. office uh, determines the manner and cause of death, uh, which is the most important. And nobody can overrule that. Um, so I believe the best person for the job is myself. Um, and so I, that's what I got for that one. Okay. Good. Mr. Greg Shore, same question. Do you need me to repeat that? No, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, the, the coroner is a very uh, important position in our county. We are responsible for investigating all deaths that come to our office, whether they're natural, accidental, suicide, homicide. Uh, we're responsible for signing death certificates, issuing cremation permits, and also issuing burial transit permits uh, if someone is to move a body. So uh, it, we have a lot of responsibility. We also deal with uh, families and uh, also with uh, the funeral homes in our county. If you want to say, Mr. Shorkas, you'll have this next question first. What was your driving force for seeking this office? It started back in high school. I, I thought I wanted to be following my dad's footsteps as a photographer. In high school, I was taking pictures on the annual staff, and I got uh, a chance to ride on an ambulance. And when I did that, I knew that was my passion. Uh, I worked on the ambulance, started an ambulance company when I was 18 years old. Uh, while I was a paramedic, I would respond to scenes of crime scenes, and it intrigued me what was going on behind the yellow tape. And uh, so that gave me interest, and in 1984, I ran against the incumbent, Wilton Mackey, and uh, he beat me handily, and I told him I'd see him again in four years. Uh, four years later, he and I got together, and he uh, appointed me as a deputy coroner. So he gave me about five years of experience before he retired, and then I ran for coroner. But uh, mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a passion for our community. I feel like that uh, the work that we do uh, is important and I think that we should treat everybody with compassion and respect. And uh, no matter you know, who it is out there, who we deal with, I want them to be respectfully treated and that's what I instill in my staff. Same question, Mr. Hayes. Thank you. Do you need me to repeat it? Uh, no, ma'am. So just like Mr. Shore, out of high school, I had a passion for EMS also. Um, and with the current situation of the coroner's office, the current staff, I don't find many issues with the current staff, but there are issues that I do find within the office. Uh, so this year, around January, I talked to my family and made sure my kids would be okay with me running for coroner. Um, and I think I can bring some great ideas to the office and, and move Anderson County coroner's office into the future. Um, what do you got there? And you'll have the next yes, question first. So what experience has prepared you for this position? So I have a, about a year of experience in the funeral service, uh, over a decade experience in EMS. Um, I have taken a course that uh, is required by the South Carolina law um, that I believe, you know, puts me not quite as much of experience, but it's a start. Um, I know when Mr. Shore came into office, um, you know, it was just some years later that he uh, got his death investigation uh, certification. I'm going to come into the office with that. Same question. Mr. Shorty, you need to repeat it? No, ma'am. Uh, most of my experience before I entered the coroner's office was medical experience, and I feel like that it's important that uh, the coroner have either medical experience, law enforcement experience, or both. Uh, I became a certified paramedic in uh, 1978. I was the first paramedic in Anderson County. Uh, that experience has certainly helped me uh, with the work. Uh, after I was elected, I got, in, I got involved with our coroner association and we changed a lot of laws to improve the system. One of those was to have academy class for new coroners and new deputy coroners with the uh, South Carolina um, Law Enforcement uh, Training Center in Columbia, the Criminal Justice Center. I was in the first coroner's class uh, of that program and uh, today we each year have a basic class uh, one year. The second year uh, we have an advanced class. Uh, those programs have professionalized the coroner system across the state. Uh, 
our associations work tirelessly to improve that, to put regulations in there. Uh, when we run now, you have to have credentials. You can, uh, you, you must be uh, uh, prepared to be a coroner, to run for coroner, and all those uh, things that we've worked on in the association have improved the system statewide. Mr. Shore, you'll have the next question. <clears throat> if elected, what changes would you like to implement or build upon? I'm going to continue uh, the work that we're doing right now and to kind of give you an idea of what's happened just in the last few years. Uh, we have uh, hand selected uh, our staff. Uh, the deputy coroners that I have right now uh, have law enforcement experience. We hired uh, uh, one of our deputy coroners has a master's degree in nursing. Uh, so uh, I'm looking to continue to put the quality people in our office to do the job. Uh, we're going through accreditation right now. Our county uh, received a grant for the coroner's office to help us to become accredited and we'll be accredited in the fall of 2024. We also received a grant recently for the opioid uh, uh, settlement and we're using that to help get out and educate the public on what's going on. I will give a shout out to the chamber. Uh, quite a few years ago when we started seeing an uptick in deaths. Uh, I was interviewed by Pam and Pam said, hey, we've got to do something about that. Uh, we can't just, you know, let this continue. And with Pam and the board of directors of the chamber, we worked together to uh, address what was going on with the opioid crisis. And that's the reason that we have the grant money coming in now uh, was, you know, the forethought of the chamber. I mean, the chamber is our advocate for businesses and uh, the success of our community, but they also care about our community to spend time and focus on this issue. And last year we lost over 100 people to drug overdoses that were accidental. These were not people that wanted to end their life. Uh, our new uh, program that we have out there is called DEAD, D-E-A-D, and it uh, is Drugs End All Dreams, and it does end all dreams. When someone passes away, it affects families, neighborhoods, churches, schools, the you know friends. Uh, it has a big impact on our community, and these are preventable drugs, and uh, we're going to continue to work hard, and if I'm reelected, that's going to be our mission to continue. Um, it's, it's my plan coming into the office not just to start an uh, outreach program, it's to always have an outreach program. I know that the coroner's office did receive $45,000 this year, um, but I would have started that you know, prior to that. So coming into the office, we're always going to have community outreach, whether we have the grant funding or whether we do not. Um, another thing is 100% transparency. You know, I submitted a four-year request about a month ago to the coroner's office. Uh, just requesting some information that that you can't find on the website and the coroner's office has come back and trying to charge me twenty two hundred dollars you know for this information it's going to be my policy that we're going to give it to you for free just like anderson county talking with rusty burns the other day rusty said i will not put a fee uh, schedule in place because it is the people's information so i promise you you'll always have that information 100 percent accountability you know we'll always keep a tally on what's going on in our office, where our vehicles are, um, making sure that our deputy coroners and staff are doing what the people need them to do. We're not going to use the office for anything other than that. And now we'll have a two-minute wrap-up, and uh, it will be time. So if you hear her ding the glass, that's what Brandy's doing. We'll start with you for the two-minute wrap-up, Mr. Hayes, uh, just saying why people should vote for you. Just on my last statement alone, you know, transparency, accountability. Um, I know Mr. Shore has been in office for 28 years. It is my belief that almost we should have term limits in constitutional offices, you know, whether it's uh, a county council or a, or a, or a house race. Um, coroner's office is no different. I believe we get complacent in time um, the longer that we stay there. So I think that I'm going to be the best candidate. I'm 35 years old this year, uh, so I'm old enough to run for president. I don't ever plan on doing that. Um, but uh, have, I have reached that uh, age. But accountability, 100% um, transparency with every dollar that, that gets spent by our office. It's certainly been a pleasure to serve Anderson County for 28 years plus six years as deputy coroner. Uh, I want to continue to serve our community. I feel like that we have a lot to do. Uh, 
I, uh, I'm active uh, in our community. I'm active uh, in our EMS. I'm active in our community uh, not-for-profits. Uh, I support those. Um, I'm also on the uh, Vulnerable Adult Review Committee. Uh, we review every death that happens in an institution in South Carolina. SLED actually sends an agent to investigate that death, and I'm on the committee to review those. That's appointed by the governor. I was appointed on that about 10 years ago. Uh, but uh, I will continue to work hard and uh, I will continue to uh, be transparent. Uh, every budget that we've had at the Anderson County Coroner's Office has gone through the county council's approval and uh, I feel like that uh, we have grown with the county. When I first started, there were three of us, myself, my chief deputy, and a secretary, and we answered about 600 calls a year. We do about 2,200 uh, cases a year now, and we have a staff of 15. So uh, the council has been gracious to support us as Anderson County's grown. And uh, you know, and if I feel like that we need something, I know I can go to the council and uh, plead my case. So I appreciate you coming out and voting on June the 11th, and I hope that you'll vote Greg Shore. Thank y'all for being here, and thank the chamber for having us. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, both. Um, we really appreciate all of you that are seeking office because uh, it takes uh, someone who really cares about their community, our county, our region, and our state. And we really appreciate all of you because uh, not everybody steps up to the plate and is willing to do that for office and for all of us. So thank you.